Hello, welcome to Luna Midnight Designs. So I have had this idea for a while, an overgrown skeleton, but also half body. So for this doll, I will be using an Emberaptor High and a Skeleta, and I will be cutting both the heads and the bodies in half. For the hair, I'll be using this bright green called Limelight, and this darker green called Everglades, both from Shimmerlocks on Etsy. So with a plan in place, let's get started. So to start, I cut both the bodies in half. I know the view looks a little weird, it's because I made a makeshift sanding box to help keep my area clean and dust free. Once I have the sides of the bodies I want to attach together, I use epoxy clay to put them together. Looking good so far! Next, I cut the heads. I have to be very careful because if I go too fast, I might cut the wrong way and completely ruin it. So I take it slow and make sure I follow the line I drew. Once cut, I line them up to see how it looks, and they kind of do need a bit of fixing so they match better. I also put hot glue in the one side so it's more stable and stronger since it's going to be the one that has the neck hole. I want it to be less squishy because I needed to keep it shape and to be very firm. And before I put the two sides of the head together, there's something I need to do first. The one side needs hair. I do this before attaching the heads so that me stabbing the hair over and over doesn't cause damage to the glue or clay that holds the sides together. I also have to be very careful when rerouting the cut edge so that the holes don't break. But I only reroute the front corner of the head as well as the hairline and make glue wefts for the rest. I was too scared the hair would break and wasn't like strong enough because it was still pretty squishy. So I did something. Off camera I finished the hair and well. I also attached the other side of the face. I'm so sorry, please forgive me for not showing this and a few other things. I also had to lengthen the skeleton leg because it wasn't quite matching right. I had to also fix the neck because it just like broke apart. So for the skull, I had to kind of cut it in a weird way so that it could actually fit with the other side. And I used more hot glue to attach and hold everything together. It's not pretty, but it will be covered. Now to make the skull look more real, I use epoxy clay to first cover the area in a very, very thin layer, and then I add the skull details. I add the eye hole, the cheekbone, the nose hole, and the teeth. It's more realistic than expected, but I still really like it. Now this is when I age and weather the skeleton. I just use pastels and eyeshadow, but I also have to mask off the hair first so it's not damaged by Mr. Super Clear. 
I used different shades of green and also some black and a little bit of brown. To add a bit more pigment and a brighter green, I use color pencils. I also use color pencils to add more details like cracks and such. It might not be visible later, but it still adds to the overall look. Now I blush the other side of the body, just to make it look more alive and less pale and less flat. I also give her a face, a closed eye look, like she is asleep. I use more yellow and orange just to balance out all the green. Nothing too fancy, just a simple and basic face. I also add freckles, cause I just love them. Now I use this liquid gold paint pen on the space between the two halves. I don't know why, but it looks so gorgeous in the end. It just adds something extra. It makes it, I don't know, it just, it just felt right really. I also use the gold around the eye hole, teeth, and a few other places. For her body half, I just wanted a simple dress to like lay on her and I didn't want it to go over to the skeleton half, so I just draped the fabric and then I glued it in place.
Now for the overgrowth, the life coming from death. I use yarn flocking for the moss. I put some glue down and then I dab on to some of the moss and leave it to dry. I then used this plant stuff to add more texture and make it look like stuff is actually either growing out of the bone or at least on it. I then add some vines as well, either wrapping around the bone or trying to make it look like it's going through the bone. I then use these brown painted things, they look like little cute mushrooms to me. I then add a few of these flowers, and with that, the doll is done. And here is the final doll, Evergreen. She lays silent in the ground. Life comes from her. She's neither dead nor alive, but in a place where both converge. They call her Evergreen, a spirit of life and death. She shows that even in death there is life. Because from her death came the life of plants, moss, vines, and even beautiful flowers. She is perfect, exactly how I imagined her to be. I just love her. I really don't know what she is though. But if you have any theories, please leave a comment and let me know. I bet a bunch of cool stories can be told about her. Or come from her. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Follow me on Instagram to see more. To be more a part of my process, check out my community page for polls on doll ideas and sneak peeks of upcoming videos. And subscribe to catch future videos. Thank you for all the love and support. Have a creative day. See you soon. Bye!